Week 9 of the Prep Sports Report, ready to start with some girls gymnastics, Wayne, as the DAC was on Saturday. Let's check out some of the highlights. Heavily favored Lady Vikings, but first, uh, Heather Osorio for Maryville. Maryville uh, did really well. They got third in this particular event, and she uh, is really an outstanding performer for Maryville. They had some injuries during this meet, though, which yes. are not going to bode well for them here right. in the sectional week. Hannah Wilson, you know, just did an excellent job for Valpo. Valpo is so, so loaded. Number one in the state, Joe, and they've got the highest score uh, of a 114 in the state. This is Madison Kurtz. Nice dismount here for, she's a Portage uh, um, gymnast. And this is the all-around champion, yeah. Jenna Algozin. We remember her sister. Mm -hmm. Now Jenna comes along and wins it with a 37.875. And Rochelle Miller for Valpo, second in the all-around. Algozin won the bars. Kurtz won the beam. Rochelle Miller the vault. Uh, right. And Valpo impressive as we head to the sectional coming up this weekend. All right, some girls basketball, local semi-state, the Lady Pirates here in Crown Point against a really, really good Homestead team who took advantage early on. Yeah, you know, Homestead is has a powerful program, and uh, uh, Miraville played well in the second half, but, uh, you know, Victoria Gaines really had a nice game here, as she has all season long, and she's going to be one heck of a recruit, Joe, for yeah. Michigan State. Erica McClinton inside. You know, Maryville did have a run. I think they cut it either to three or to one there, but it was only for like two, three seconds right, before right. Uh, Homestead really went back out and that. took Look control. That was a great drive <laughs> on the baseline. Victoria Gaines. Outstanding drive. There's a nice hang shot there by Josie Fisher. And, you know, Homestead is just so deep. Uh, yeah, Grace German had balance. 20 for them, and uh, uh, McLaughlin had 19. Big steal. Big balance. Carissa McLaughlin there on the steal, and uh, Homestead, an outstanding girls team. They win 66-52. Lady Pirates, uh, regional champs with a great season, but knocked off in the semi-state. First ball game was uh, OD, couple times state champ on the girls' side against right. Lafayette Central Catholic. They have uh, populated our, uh, you know, a little five all season long, and uh, they just have an outstanding team. But boy, Lafayette uh, Central Catholic came to play. Taylor Cranenberg's had an outstanding year. Of course, South Central's Lady Satellites beat OD earlier this year, but couldn't win the sectional. Of course, Oregon Davis having the benefit of the home floor in their sectional as Cranenberg knocks down a jumper again. Lafayette Central Catholic, though, got this one in Crown Point, Wayne. Yeah, they really did. They just played very, very well, and uh, OD had a nice little run, but uh, this wasn't enough. So no local teams right. in the girls' state finals right. in girls' basketball. We've kind of hit a rough patch where we haven't been locally really had a dominant girls' team that gets down to the state finals. Right. Uh, when you look outside of Oregon Davis, who's that really, you know, on the outskirts of Northwest Indiana. Right, right. You know, we've got a lot of uh, freshmen and, and sophomore girls that are coming back next year uh, that will make a difference in the area, but I don't know of any team as strong as a homestead and yeah. things like that. Merrill had, a, you know, a nice, yes, they nice did. talent base, nice. compete in the semi-state, but couldn't get it done. All right, how about we go to a timeout, Wayne? I think we're going to go to this timeout, show you the girls polls and come back we'll have a full slate of boys basketball To find out more about prep basketball and other winter sports, find us on Facebook. Watch full episodes and share your fan experience with Prep Sports Report.
back on the Prep Sports Report, ready for some boys high school basketball. And let's go to a big week, prep week for the sectional lane. Some, yes. some weekend games and uh, Munster rounding into form, Wayne. They really are. And uh, uh, Kevin Schlottman there has uh, just played very, very well for Munster. Uh, in this particular game, he had 21 for the Mustangs. Nice drive down the lane for Christopher Porter. I happen to be uh, in Munster. Uh, either Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning before the game, Wayne, and uh, needless to say, they were stunned that uh, <laughs> you picked Lake Central and uh, forced me to come to our senses on this uh, uh, set and uh, pick the Mustangs with the red check mark on Tuesday night, but we'll get to those highlights yes. in a minute. but Munster really played well. They shot the ball well in this particular game. Uh, Hackett had, uh, Drew Hackett had 17. Um, Schlattman had 21. And, Mandich there. And, you know, Bowman has a lot of talent. Their record doesn't show it, but they've played a lot of good teams and they've got some talent. Who knows? They could really put it together for the well, section. Well, this is, I mean, remember, they beat Crown Point. Right. So they haven't really been consistent. We've seen how good Crown Point's been lately. That's right. But Crown Point, I think, had 31 turnovers in that game. But, Against Bowman. Yeah. So 73-53, Munster big. Uh, they are rounding into tournament form as they always do. This was the prelude to a sectional matchup. Morgan and Washington. Yes. On the weekend, Wayne. And Morgan got the better of Washington in this particular game, 63-48. Uh, to 48. And, uh, you know, Jake Kosalki, he had 18, and Chase Braden. Luke Saladay. Luke Saladay there for WT with a yeah. shot. Jake Selke right there on the drive. Man. We thought that, you know, boy, Washington Township, after losing to uh, Morgan Township, would really have to make some adjustments in the sectional. Well, and Washington Township came back on Tuesday night to win over Morgan. That's right, in the sectional. So those adjustments were made. And Michigan City Marquette, really impressive against Westville. You know, a guy nice we haven't drive. talked about is, is Alex line. Lothar from um, Washington Township. He's like, I think, the third or fourth uh, scorer in the uh, Northwest Indiana leading scorer. Chase Braden with a nice drive, and that was Connor Martin to the goal. So this was a 63-48, 15-point win that was turned around That's right. That's when the right. postseason started. All right. Now let's get to some more high school basketball on the weekend. Big rivalry game. Crown Point really started to get to the next level. That big blowout win at Lake Central. And this guy has started to get it going. Boy, he had, look at that nice pass inside it to uh, Jeffers. And uh, Lowell just really had very little answer. That was a nice move there. Eric Zakakis. Mm -hmm. Nick Mantis here. Nick jumper. Mantis. Going to be a player. He is going to be a player. Bonin feeling more comfortable shooting the basketball there on the baseline. Nice drive off the glass there by Josh Burquist. And there's Grant Galen from downtown. Boy, he can shoot the basketball. Crown Point offensively can really get hot. Yes, they can. <laughs> 13 me. for uh, Grant Galen and uh, 15 for Jeffers. Corey for Lowell had nine and. and uh, bunch of rebounds. All right, Tuesday night, Wayne, some big matchups. You turned in your red t-shirt and picked <laughs> Lake Central, and it came back to haunt you because it was 24-7 before the seats were warm. Jeez, I was, and I was in the seats, and they were cold, <laughs> believe me. The seats were cold as Lake Central was shooting, uh, and, and a lot of it was Munster's defense. They just really had a Tremendous game plan. That's uh, Joe Bannister there. But I really thought that Lake, Lake Central overachieved early in this year. Yeah, I did too. But, you know, they have some people that can score. I really attribute a lot of that to the defense um, of Munster. That was Drew uh, Hackett at the half. If you defend Bannister, make him take away the drive, can't get other people involved. If they don't have the weapons. They don't have the big fellow that's at Butler. You know, they don't have the horses they've had. Ty Wilburn, that's a nice jumper there. That is, that is. 
I was totally impressed with the defense of Munster. If they can play that well against Westside and then into the championship, they have a real possibility of coming around. It seems like EC is, you know, taking a step back a little bit uh, from where they were playing at there for a few weeks. Uh, and we'll see if, uh, if they can get a roll of them. Not, not that impressive in the win against Morton. No, they weren't. Morton stayed with them. You're going to give credit to Morton. But uh, EC didn't come out with that fire. And um, they're going to need that, you know, uh, in the championship. You don't want to get in a close game if you're East Chicago no. with Munster in the section. No, you certainly don't. Uh, there's a little, you know, there's history there, <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> All right, we All right let's let's go to uh, Valpo and Crown Point. Valpo and Crown Point over at Maryville. This was a, sh a little bit of a surprise because Valpo got off to a 10-1 lead, and when Valpo gets off to a 10-1 lead, Steve Helm with three, it's usually over. That's right. That is totally right. Helm really had a nice game. He had 13 for Valpo, 10 but over there. Crown <laughs> Point kind of shut out uh, the monster. Uh, you know, uh, Drew uh, Paul and uh, Ted Helm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they really play defense Crown well. Point playing some defense, and then Blake Bonin kind of took over. He got left alone. Oh, Beautiful yeah. spin move there. A young man this that's probably, Blake. he's probably practiced a little in this gym before God, over the years. Yes. <laughs> and he was on fire, Joe, on fire. Seven threes for And you got to think Valpo had their defense geared to Galen. Oh, definitely. And Jeffers. And they took Galen and Jeffers out of the game, but Bonin just scorched them. What an outstanding Seven effort. threes? Yep, seven threes by Blake Bonin for Crown Point. Um, and this was a huge upset. You look at the score here, 37-35, that's Valpo scores. Those are the games that Valpo that's, wins. Yeah. They got out 10 to one. That's that's their that's recipe right. for winning. That's right. And, and really Crown Point beat them at their own temple, beat them at their own game. Uh, on a big night uh, by Bonin. Yes, Bonin did beat them. <laughs> okay, let's right. go to some Boone Grove Lake Station at the big time Hebron sectional lane. Hey, Lake Station here uh, played well all season. And I'll tell you, Brian Patterson, Brian Patterson had 29 here against Boone Grove, but nobody else stepped up for that. Michael Boyer and the steal and the drive. Boone Grove had nice balance. David Sorrell. Sorrell had a great game. He had 17. Kyle Kaminsky had uh, 12. So they had a lot of uh, people scoring. Maybe one of the most competitive sectionals in the state. Yes. This game. Anybody out of the six teams could have came out of there and won. That's Mr. McKay there showing off the dribble. On the, that was a coach's son move there. Uh -huh. Right hand, left That's hand dribble. Sure. And uh, showing you the whole arsenal on a nice drive to the goal. Boy, Patterson can play in the next level. He can play at 29. There's, oh, there's a left hand a hook by the, you know, by speaking Superman. Of, <laughs> speaking of the whole arsenal, Dan Golston, who we still believe, we have not found him on Twitter. Uh, really? Maybe Superman's not on Twitter. <laughs> I had our guy, uh, Brandon Vickery, even research that. If, he, if you're on Twitter, Brandon Vickery knows about <laughs> it. And uh, no Twitter address for Superman. Uh, maybe Twitter's his kryptonite, I don't know. He's been on a roll lately. In that and, uh, second game, then, Whiting and uh, River yeah. Forest. River Forest probably was a favorite here. Whiting has had an excellent season. They're 14 and 8 on the season. And, um, you know, they were balanced. Joseph Hawkins. Grant came Baker, up with nice drive there. Uh, Chris Very close Diaz, game. That's right. At 11. Well, you're talking a 39 37 game. Joseph Hawkins uh, with a big night, 11 points. Grant Baker for River Forest had 16, and he was their leading scorer. Martin Petroff, of course, who uh, football player. Oh, yeah. Sala we for River, a football player. Joseph Hawkins again in the lane. Oh, you got to like that shot. Oh, yeah. Malachi Sala right there with the three. Oh, the steal nice from behind pick. by Victor Quinones, and the steal and the two. So two outstanding games Tuesday night, two close ones, and the Oilers survive to uh, knock out River Forest after a 13-8 first quarter and uh, a big win for Whitey. Big win. Big so, win. Still anybody's sectional at Hebron, Wayne. Oh, definitely. Oh, Hebron will definitely. match up now against Whiting mm -hmm. uh, uh, tomorrow night. So some big, big, big showdowns coming up, and Wayne will pick them all here shortly. We're going to go to a timeout. We're going to show you the top 10 boys players here on the Prep Sports Report.
To find out more about prep basketball and other winter sports, find us on Facebook. Watch full episodes and share your fan experience with Prep Sports Report. back on the prep sports report i just want to you know we saw alexis and uh, caleb they right. are great interns and uh i think alexis has been hanging out with caleb too much because she didn't show up for the yeah the, didn't for the I, show she? I was wondering <laughs> <laughs> she she big a time just like caleb does because caleb doesn't come anymore to the show so but alexis has usually been there. Well, all right you, we, we you give a little start. fame <laughs> you know. they're stars they're stars now they don't they don't come all right big time booster club fundraiser on Saturday Wayne and you yes. got a chance to uh, partake in some food it was great it was a great event and uh, uh, good people out there and you know we were very happy to be out there let's check out this uh, story on the Cheshire to football booster pancake breakfast <laughs> Pancake Breakfast has been the biggest fundraiser for the Chesterton Football Boosters. The community has just been super great with the sponsorship and behind the Chesterton High School, all sports. So we just want to take it to the next level. As far as coach is concerned this year, football is really a 12-month season. They condition all year round. Uh, they're together as a team. They're really trying to build that team unity and concept. And the boosters really have turned into a 12-month position as well. So our money this year is going towards any safety equipment and the new uniforms. That's our biggest goal right now. Members of the Booster Club did a wonderful job organizing a lot of this stuff. Thank you so much. With all of the budgetary cuts from school districts to school districts throughout the state, having an opportunity in an organization like this to be able to help and really contribute to uh, uh, reach the ultimate goals that you look forward to in a, a program, uh, it really helps. And any of the funds generated from today go right directly back to the kids. Today our special guest here to draw the uh, winner for the letter jacket, uh, our PFR's very own Wayne Spetnoff. Welcome to Cheese Town. Oh, thank you very much. We have a huge love affair with PFR. So for us to be able to have Wayne come out, pick the winner for the Letterman's jacket, huge shout out to Wayne. Hashtag Chesterton loves Wayne. In five minutes, one of you lucky people is going to be winning a Letterman's check. The Six of Hearts. Yeah. We've got it here. Earn that letter, baby. Earn that letter. I didn't know what PFR was until I was educated by the boys coming over on Thursday nights and having dinners. And it's like, all right, we got to watch PFR. We got to turn Wayne on. It's been a huge opportunity, even as parents, for us to come together, meet some new friends, get the stands packed this season, and just really grow the whole feeling of what it is to have Trojan pride. That participation, that ownership, certainly generates an excitement, not only with our parents and our program, but also within the community. It gets me excited. It really makes you like, just want the season to come faster. I'm just stoked. Well, here we are at the uh, Chesterton uh, Booster Club Pancake uh, Breakfast. Booster clubs are extremely important in any type of athletic program. When you have so much cost in uniforms and things like that, you need the community to get together and, su and support your team. And we want to thank the Chesterton Boosters for us uh, coming out and giving us this tremendous meal to eat. And thank you for watching PFR. Soon they forget the hashtag that Wayne hates to do them. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore, because mm, those wow. pancakes were they good. Were, they were loving you Saturday. They <laughs> forgot all those times you didn't pick them. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I did, no, there were people that came up <laughs> okay. and said They something. didn't forget them. Oh, right. yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. But they <laughs> I, didn't were really, so. I didn't think they forgot those. <laughs> they were really nice, and I, we want to thank them for having us over there and stuff. Another great story from last week in boys' high school basketball, Wayne. Michael Spike Buecher, the longtime manager of the Lacrosse Tigers and their biggest fan, a special young man in their heart, has been attending basketball games since he was in elementary school. And on Tuesday, the 24th of February, he uh, fulfilled his dream. He put the jersey on and oh. took the floor with his high school teammates. After a few misses and a few offensive rebounds, he got his first basket of his career for the Lacrosse Tigers. He was the Knox Radio WKVI player of the game. That's fantastic. Congratulations, Congratulations. to uh, not only Lacrosse, but to West Central who were the opponents that night oh, really? on uh, fulfilling some of these dreams out there Gosh. In, uh, in a game, which was, uh, was great. We want to thank our, our longtime fan, Aaron uh, Rust, to, to, uh, who made us aware of that and sent us some video. That's what high school sportsmanship it's definitely, is. It's definitely a great story. All right, time now for some picks. Time for Wayne's World. Ah, the check mark, 1-0 as usual. He turned his back Boy. on Munster. <laughs> Coach Hackett and the Mustangs. They won't forget I, that, Wayne. I thought like they were score more than 45. Uh, this week, I like Munster over West Side oh, on sure. Friday night. <laughs> EC over Lowell, but, but the Cardinals. Wow, you, uh, you're sticking the with the posse the on Saturday night. You must want a good seat at the yeah. game. Yeah, make sure you hold, you hold a seat for me. Boy, Merrillville with the big... Crown Point win over Valpo. You know, don't go to sleep on Portage, Crown oh, Point no. boys. Oh, no. They've played very well. How lately. many games have they won this year? 5th, 16? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chesterton uh, then over Maryville and uh, Crown Point, I think, is going to win that All sectional. Right. There's the check mark. I'm going for the Bees. Mm -hmm. I'm going for the Bees and the Trojans. And you're going with the Chesterton. I'm going with okay. Chesterton. That's just because there's not many other. Pick Will they take uh, my hand, <laughs> pancakes back? Okay. Yeah. Lighthouse over. <laughs> Lighthouse over Griffith. That's tonight. Yes. Right. That is tonight. And um, Roosevelt over Gavitt. And I like uh, Bowman over Hammond. That is on Coach Friday. Coach Ray will be back on the bench. One newspaper will reporting he'll be a volunteer assistant. Okay. Not the head coach. On Saturday night. <laughs> oh, no comment I, there for yeah. you. Huh? <laughs> I'd like to see that. I think, you got your, I think your pancakes got caught in your throat I there know. a little bit. <laughs> Lighthouse over Clark. <laughs> Roosevelt, Roosevelt <laughs> over uh, uh, Bowman. And, and then I the like championship on Roosevelt. Monday night. I you like Roosevelt, Roosevelt over Lighthouse? lighthouse? God, I'd love to pick Lighthouse. Okay. Them, but I won't. What? I, won't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pick against the belt. <laughs> All right, Andrea. T Dub, we'll be right over here. All right, Kelly Med, Andrean over New Prairie, and Wheeler over Hanover Central on Friday. And I like Andrean to take this sectional again. Nice win, but Wheeler's playing good basketball. Oh, yes, now. they are. Wheeler yes, has really are. stepped up their game. Let's go to the big two way at fr Friday night in uh, Hebron. I like uh, Boone Grove over Bishop Noel. Me too. And uh, I like Whiting over Hebron. And you know what? I'm taking Whiting over Wow. Boone Grove. You're, you're yep. taking See, the other one? If that was at Boone, uh -huh. I'd take Boone. But Did it's at not? Hebron uh, on a neutral yeah. floor. No. I can't go against the Oilers. <laughs> In one day at Delphi, Winnemac over Delphi. Um, Rensselaer over North Newton. And I like Winnemac to win that section. All right, at Couts. And at Couts. Washington Township in a really huge surprise in this game against uh, Couts. I like Marquette in a close one over uh, 21st, but I like the Marquette uh, Catholic going Yeah, on. Marquette looked loaded the other night. Yes, they and did. they look ready to defend that 1A state title at Triton. And at Triton, I really like uh, Triton over Culver. Uh, South Central gets a uh, uh, victory over Oregon Davis, but Triton comes away with the 1A section. All right, we'll have a full plate of high school basketball highlights as we recap the sectionals next week, next Thursday night on the Prep Sports Report. Good night.